Tonga against Scotland in the Autumn Internationals. Uh, interesting one, this. We'll go through the lineups and some of the recent history, but um, predictions. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird one because it's outside the test window. So uh, both sides are kind of missing some of their big guns, which is a wee bit unfortunate. Um, I have had a look through the Tongan squad. There's a few unfamiliar names there for me. Uh, the Scottish one's got a few debutantes as well. But yeah, it should be an interesting one. It's the first game back at Murrayfield uh, for quite some time. And uh, yeah, we'll have to kind of see how things play out. Uh, I should say there's a Super Brew pool if you guys want to sign up for Super Brew. It's your predictions thing. I've been going pretty good in the old Super Brew lately. I've done the Premiership and the URC and uh, uh, the NPC. And I, I'm doing pretty good. So I'm going into this one pretty confident if you guys uh, want to join along. Uh, there'll be a link somewhere down there. Um, but yeah, Scotland ranked number seven in the world. Uh, this is their first of four matches in the Autumn Nation series. Like I mentioned, this is the only one that falls outside the test window. So they are without the likes of Hogg and, uh, and Russell and I think Johnny Gray's injured anyway. But um, yeah, they're without some of the kind of big guns. But it's still a pretty a pretty strong look inside. They should be going to this one uh, pretty confidently. They've got um, Pierre Skuman, uh, South African former Bulls guy. He's going to get his debut after um, you know doing his uh, residency thing, playing for um, for Edinburgh for a few years now. So it'd be good to see how he goes at international level. Uh, Turner is there alongside Lion uh, Xander Fagerson, so it's a pretty strong looking front row. But um, as I said. Pierre is untested at this level. I'm sure he'll go fine. Uh, Hodgson is another one who is debuting uh, in the second row alongside Rob Harley. So it is the second row that is one area that Scotland for this series are kind of looking a little bit light with injuries and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how these guys go as well. Richie, Watson and Fagerson has kind of been the first choice back row at least in the Six Nations this year. I mean... I kind of expected Scotland to to mix things up a little bit more for the Tonga game in terms of the back row, but that's kind of going all guns blazing with those guys. So, uh, yeah, expect them to cause some carnage. Watson to get over the ball. Uh, Ferguson to make some strong carries. And Richie to do a bit of everything. He is co-captain for this one alongside Price. Another lion there at number nine. So he's uh, co-captain, which is an interesting one rather than having an all-out captain. Uh, Blair Kinghorn is number 10. Man, I mean, yeah, okay, cool. He's been playing 10 at URC level, so yeah, give the guy a crack. I thought he might be 15 with an eye on covering 10, but there you go. He's uh, he's at number 10 for an international, so uh, good on Blair. Um, he's up against a pretty experienced opponent in, uh, in Kurt Marath, so there's a bit of a discrepancy in terms of experience there, but... Um, yeah, I would say overall the Scotland squad probably has more caps. I haven't actually counted them overall. Uh, Sam Johnson and Sione Tupolotu is the 12 and 13 combo. Johnson, uh, again, how many caps does he have? Not a heck of a lot, but he's got more than Sione who has none. Uh, his debut as well. He's been pretty good at the URC level since he signed. Uh, he's been loving the old crash ball and offload game, so I expect to see him taking the ball to the line. Uh, Kyle Stane and Rufus McLean are your wingers with Darcy Graham at fullback. Must be one of the shorter guys to play fullback in recent times. But he's certainly got the skill set. I am keen to see Rufus McLean go because he's been electric in the URC as well. Uh, the bench has got some experience. McAnally, Batty and Kebble there. Uh, Sykes and Crosby will be getting debuts when they come on. So a little bit of experience depth building there. Uh, Nick Hanning is there. Uh, Jamie Dobby and Ross Thompson. I was kind of expecting Ross Thompson to get a start. But maybe it's a bit of an ask to see him kind of be chucked into the deep end so it is a 6-2 split for the Scots I guess they're expecting to get a fair bit of work done up front uh, for Tonga they've got um, a fair few debutantes as well but not all of them that inexperienced you've got Ohila, uh, Nuamo and uh, Lolohia so there's two debutantes there in your loose head and your hooker but Ohila played for the Hurricanes for ages he's been in France uh, nicknames the Tongan Bear he is I love the phrase. He's a big unit. Uh, he's a big man. Isn't he? He's like 32 now. So he's not exactly uh, the greenest of debutants, but he is uh, getting his international debut. Uh, Fafita and uh, Funaki are the locks. Uh, Funaki is on his debut. Uh, Halofunua, Lokotui, and uh, Mapapalangi are the 
Lucy's Halafanua is on his debut as well, so there's a little bit of an experience. Most of these guys, though, are at least playing professional rugby somewhere, be it France, uh, Top 14 France, Tier 2. There's one guy based in Italy. These guys are all, for the most part, playing professional rugby somewhere. Uh, I would say it's a stronger looking lineup than um, than the one that got beaten pretty handily by New Zealand because some of those guys were literally pulled out of club rugby because they like amateur club rugby because they were in New Zealand and travel restrictions and whatnot. So um, it's not a full strength Tongan side by any means, but I still think it's better looking than the one that played New Zealand. Uh, Takalua and Morath, as I mentioned, that's a experienced nine ten combo. Takalua must be like thirty something by now. And uh, Maratha thinks 36. So, yeah, he's been around the block. He's been playing in the MLR uh, more recently. Takalua is one of the few guys who actually played uh, against New Zealand down here uh, a few months ago. But um, he's a pretty experienced campaigner. Um, yeah, he's captain, so I would expect him to rack up a few minutes. Uh, Vaya and Hingano are the 12-13 combo. Hingano is one guy who's been around the blocks. He's been in Japan. He's been in Europe. Um... He's been hammered by New Zealand a couple of times. Um, I remember seeing him in the game before the World Cup where we beat them 90-something. But he's actually a really good player. He's uh, he's quick and he's solid. So uh, him up against Tupolotsu could be an interesting one. Uh, Vaya, I think, is a former Sevens guy. So he should have some wheels. But I don't watch Sevens enough to really comment more than that. Uh, Walter Fafita is on one wing. And uh, Atu Manu is on the other. Manu will be getting his first game. Uh, for Tonga on the right wing. James Fiverr is another one who played against New Zealand a few months ago. Uh, kind of a 10-15 guy. So a bit of a dual playmaker thing for the Tongans. Um, yeah, and the bench. Uh, Maile, Filemi, uh, uh, and Taofa are the the front row replacements. Um, Maile is the guy who was uh, working as a roofer going into the Rugby World Cup uh 2019 i think he's got um mpc contract over here in new zealand so he's still keeping on with his rugby career uh as well um tofa will be on tabu faleafa havili kafatolu halo and uh haisila are the other replacements one of them on tabu uh it's a 6-2 split for the tongans as well man like it's a it's a much changed squad like i mentioned they don't actually have their coach over there, Totakefu, uh, he was uh, he stabbed in a home invasion a few months ago in Australia, so he's still recovering uh, as well. They've To avoid the whole travel thing, they've pretty much picked a squad uh, from Europe. They only had 27 players in their camp, though, preparing because of the, uh, the lack of guys being released due to the international window not having kind of ticked over yet. So it is going to be a tough one. You're missing like um, Tommy Ofuna, Mafi, Salmaki, Lausi. Like, there's a heap of big guns out, which is unfortunate, but they should be back uh, once November actually gets underway. Um, but yeah, as I said, very few of these guys played against New Zealand, so I'm hoping it's a stronger side than we than we saw them, because no one wants to see that many points put on the board, ideally. Um, yeah, they have played, but not for a while. Uh, 2014 was the last time we saw them play, I believe, and it was 37-12. Uh, to Scotland, pretty comfortable win in that game. Seymour scored a try, Hogg scored a try, Cowan scored a try, Marath I think was on the bench, Takalua actually started. So those guys have been around for a wee while. But a couple of years before that, Tonga actually did manage to beat Scotland. They scored a couple of tries, laid law, kicked penalties. Uh, so it was a trial of Scotland and they went down 21-15. But man, 2012, it's almost 10 years ago, so a lot has um, a lot has changed, but I did look at the stats for that game, and apparently the penalty count for that one in 2012 was 12 penalties conceded by Scotland, 25 by Tonga, and yet they still won. So um, they'll be looking to call on the spirit of that um, of that game. But as I said, it's 15th in the world against 7th. Scotland will be looking for a strong campaign. They've got a few guys on their boo. Look, both sides have got a fair few new faces. Um, both sides will be limited on their prep time, so it may be ugly. Uh, it may be loose and open. We'll have to kind of wait and see. But it's rugby with a crowd back. It's Murrayfield. Um, it's on Saturday, I think, 2.30 local time, uh, which makes it 2.30 in the morning over here. So I'm probably going to watch this one on demand. Uh, Nick Berry is the ref. If you guys want to watch it and you're in the States, it's on Flow Rugby. Affiliate link down in the description for those guys. Um, the predictions. 
Rugby forecast has got Scotland by 24, and the bookies have got Scotland by 35 points. So, um, yeah, pretty confident based on the lineup. They've got a few British and Irish Lions in that squad, so they should be probably pretty confident. If you want to get yourself some Lions gear, they're still having a sale. I think they're going to be having more sales going into the Black Friday next month, but um, there'll be another link. Goodness me, so many links uh, in the description for the Lions store as well. It's like, I don't know, 60% off up to some of the gear. So happy days, man. Lions gear kind of doesn't date. So it's good stuff to have. But yeah, how do you think you guys are going to go? Uh, Scotland, Tonga this weekend. Is it going to be a big Scottish win uh, for a youthful, partially, uh, Scottish squad? Or do you think Tonga, um, despite not having their coach and having a whole kind of new roster of players, can show us something new? Uh, the bookies and whatnot are saying, no, it's going to be Scotland all day long. But you never know in sports, do you? You guys have many thoughts, and I will talk to you again soon. See you later.